Hi, welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. Uh, today I have the privilege of having Mr. Visam. Uh, Visam is the CEO of BNC Publishing. So today we have the privilege of having Mr. Visam. Uh, Visam is the CEO of BNC Publishing. Uh, Visam, uh, thanks a lot for It's uh, my coming. honor. Thank you very much for having uh, me. So just for the benefit of my audience and myself, can you just give a little background about yourself? My name is Wissam Yunan. I'm the CEO of BNC Media. We have been in operation for the past uh, eight years, since 2014. And uh, it was uh, the day that Sheikh Mohammed announced the winning of Dubai of the Expo 2020 that both my partner and myself decided to resign from our jobs and start our own business. So what made you resign the job and start something your own? See, um, it's always, it's always what, when you want more in life that you start seeking options. And obviously we wanted more. And I, I grew up having this mentality of having my own business because that's what my dad did in his uh, days. He's my biggest inspiration. Um, God bless his soul. So he started work, for example, at the age of 13 because his father got sick and he had to support his family. So he was working at night and studying during the day until he bought the, the, the place where he was working from his own boss because his boss was expanding. So he bought that place and then he started his own factory and so on. So being your own boss is always uh, something that uh, I looked up to uh, having myself. And um, I think there was no better time than when uh, the Expo 2020 was announced. It was, uh, it was in the beginning of the days where people were speaking about entrepreneurship and talking about, you know, uh, the change and, and, and how people should be independent and working for their own and so on. And this is when Entrepreneur um, uh, Media Inc. had Entrepreneur for the whole region available. We got the brand and we started with Entrepreneur and from there on it's been eight years, eight good years. It's stressful, but good years, definitely. But you, but you said you, from your career, you started with hospitality, then to media. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you were thinking about doing something of yourself, um, and Dubai have, you know, you can find entrepreneurs in every walks of life. So there, did you analyze multiple business ideas and came to uh, in the media? No, actually, at the time, I was in media. So, so media was my direction. I, when I left hospitality, I never looked back you know, for at the hospitality industry. However, I know that one day, obviously, I'll go back to... Everybody wants to have a small restaurant somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, um, uh, I was in media, and it was the normal way of progression to go into a, a media business of my own. Can you just give a little background about your organization itself? Like what sort of... Uh, BNC. BNC. Of course. Uh, so BNC, we started as a, as a normal publishing house, magazines, website, etc. Now, today, uh, I, I would say we're a media house, media boutique agency, where we do... Um, we publish magazines, we publish uh, online portals. Um, we have the brand Entrepreneur, which is uh, the 45-year-old American brand. We have our own products in construction, in logistics, uh, in uh, hospitality, in interior design, etc. We have about 20 events of our own that we do, from forums to award ceremonies, etc. We do um, we do media consulting, we do social media, we do um, uh, video production, uh, content creation, we do um, media buying, etc., etc. So anything that has to do with media is available. So when you started, I mean, there's a lot, quite a lot of activities you, your organization is doing. So was your starting of the journey as an entrepreneur, was it challenging? And what sort of challenges do you face and how you overcome those challenges? See, uh, living in a country that is constantly looking f to be the best, you need to keep up. So challenge is always there. And uh, obviously, if you want to do something, either be the best at it or don't do it. So, so uh, the challenge is always there constantly. Uh, some of the things we, we faced at the beginning, obviously, is, is, for example, when we started, it was the time when the oil price was going down. 
So when the oil price was going down, the whole economy was affected in a way. So a lot of budgets were were held. A lot of, but because of the way we are, because of the relations with our clients, we we managed to 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 stay afloat at the time. And I I once did an interview, but I think it was the second year of our business with Al Iqtisadi, and and I told them like they they like what do you think uh, the direction is in the next five years? I said that if you're not there and you're doing it officially like as something real forget about it in five years either you're going to be shut down or you're going to be doing something else and um, that's that's how we continued you know you need to you need to adapt and you need to look at how to go forward to sustain so what will be your advice to an entrepreneur or somebody who aspire to be an entrepreneur that what what sort of mindset they should be having to make their business venture successful i think uh, the thing with entrepreneurs, uh, we see entrepreneurs all the time, you know. Um, I think what they need to keep in mind is, is either you're doing something that is out of the ordinary or don't do it. If you're going to bring another delivery app or another cleaning app or another, make sure you're better than the ones that are existing. Make sure that, that you innovate, you, you create, you put your own touch. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're gonna, competition will kill you. You know what I mean? And that's the thing, like, if you're gonna go in and compete, make sure you have something solid and make sure you have the backbone to fight because it's not an easy world. And, and obviously you need to, you, ne you need to work hard. Nothing comes easy, nothing comes easy. So, if, to, uh, to continue with that question, so what are the good qualities you think that an entrepreneur must have, uh, you know, if they need to be successful? Can I honestly be honest? Yeah. <laughs> when somebody asks you, can I be honest, uh, <laughs> expect the worst. Uh, I see a lot of people on magazine covers and in social media, and I know them. They are crooks. Yeah? I know them in, as personal people. They're crooks. However, they're successful entrepreneurs. So there isn't really a quality that someone should have to be an entrepreneur. If you have something that people need and they end up buying it from you, your qualities don't matter. It's the product that you're selling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many people I see don't even have qualities, but they're making money, they're rich, uh, uh, their employees are fine and happy and everything because they're all making money. But like it's not, they have zero qualities. So it's not really the quality of the entrepreneur. If the, it's the quality of the product this entrepreneur is coming up with, the solution they're providing to a problem that exists and how innovative what they're, pro what they're producing is or what they're delivering is or what they're creating is. And, and that, that's the key to, to to grabbing the attention that you need to sustain and continue and, 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 and go forward with your company or with your growth or with your uh, whatever you're, you're trying to achieve in your life. So what you enjoy as a most being in this media publication, being an entrepreneur? I, I love the fact that we, we our events are, I think are, are the most uh, uh, fun times because they take time to do. And then it's like it's like you're you're cultivating something you're 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 you know planting a tree and you're waiting to see the the fruits. So so when we do events, it's like that. We we work on them, we work on them, and then the day of the event, we're face to face with 300, 400 people, and we're engaging with them, and they're happy, and that's the most important part. They're, they're to see them happy and and celebrating what you offered them is 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 uh, is one of the best times, and obviously. When you're doing everything you're doing for your family and, and you see that you're, you're uh, you know, uh, getting somewhere, this is like uh, the happiness. most rewarding, absolute. So when you talk about the family happiness, customer happiness, you talk about uh, having great product and service. So combining all these things, how you define success? For I think success is, is very subjective, you know, for me. Like there are two sides, the, the success in business and success in life. Success in business is when you're making good money and you're becoming 
wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and your employees are happy and they're growing the numbers and the person's success I think is what I personally seek it's for me it's it's the fact that I can sleep peacefully I can take care of people around me if they need me um, I always tell God when I'm praying that if I reach my financial goals please make me not forget people around me and you know obviously I, I've I've um, I come from a from a middle uh, class family in Lebanon and um, and at times with war so everything middle disappeared obviously so my father I saw him struggling to provide I saw him doing his best to give us a life and he never once uh, made us feel like he couldn't or something you know what I mean so um, and that's that's what I what I like that's what I hope to always be able to do and it's the ones around me my loved ones or, or, or the, 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 the circle around me uh, to be able to support if they need for me uh, alhamdulillah I'm successful and I'm, and I'm happy and I'm you know what I mean yeah <laughs> I think one of the, the final question would I like to ask is uh, when you, from your profile or from your activities you I hear you're an angel investor too and you run the entrepreneur magazine you understand uh, innovation around uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs have brilliant business ideas but they, they really don't have that finance to take to the to the next sure. level so can you share how how can I mean can they approach you or what are the best ways in which an aspiring entrepreneur having a great idea how can where can he showcase these ideas to get the right angel investor to uh, help them in giving the right funding so that they can also flourish I think most importantly is for them to believe in what they're selling you know so if it's if it's an existing company that is um, looking for funds the product is there they have something to show and they need to be able to convince the person if they get a chance so they might get one chance to see them they might get the chance of someone telling that someone please read their email they're going to send you a deck or something so they need to grab that moment and they need to sell the hell out of it you know what i mean if they believe in their product if they don't believe don't knock doors because no like people know they they want you to show them why you want their money and how much money you're going to make them in return and if you hesitate and you're not sure that you're going to make the money, don't knock their door. Nobody wants to give free money. You know what I mean? Uh, especially if it's investments that they're seeking. So uh, have a solid uh, product. Show me that you're worth my money. And show me how much money you're going to make me. That's what investors look for. Thanks a lot. <laughs> With some, I think I'm sure a lot of uh, because our the college which I, I teach our MBA is entrepreneurship oriented MBA and most of our students are UA nationals nice. and they always aspire to have a business of their own and uh, thanks for your uh, you know so much of they're, your experience they're mostly UAE nationals all are UAE nationals so it's, it's great to hear from you and not only here I mean this video is watched by a couple of my uh, faculties used in other parts of the world so but it's entrepreneurship is a common thing I think every country is promoting entrepreneurship I think but the very less knowledge about uh, uh, how to go ahead so i think your case studies like yours will definitely like you know even if people can go I, through i hope i hope that this video would would be useful and maybe we should have yeah. had it in arabic <laughs> yeah i think that's something which maybe i will because i really don't know arabic so maybe i will uh, give you the course. questions and then we can uh, i think that will really help uh, the students to i learn. just want to give an advice to your uh, uh, to your students if i may sure. um, you live in one of the best countries in the world. Uh, the support you could get if you prove yourself from your government is beyond anything I've seen anywhere in the world. I've been here for 22 years. You tell me, like, what's success? Become a UAE national. Yeah. You agree. know? But what I'm saying is, I, I go to the States a lot, I go to uh, Switzerland, I go to Greece. I go to Lebanon, I go all the Arabic countries all the time. There's nowhere like this country. The luxury we live in, 
the quality of service we have. We complain here about the service, you know, like not very good. Go out and see. The U.S. is the number one country in the world. Go see the quality of service in the U.S. They need 100 years to have what we have here. So use the fact that you are in the top cities of the world, the Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and benefit from what the government is offering you for your own good. And, and good luck to all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Wissam. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.